this week on the show, we'll talk the Colonels on the court and the Colonels in the classroom. And we'll begin with men's basketball and A.W. Hamilton. EKU on a three-game winning streak. And you've won those three games, Coach, by a total of five points. So you're keeping it exciting. Yeah, it's been, it's been exciting. Uh, proud of our guys. Uh, really proud of the fans, though. That last minute of the game, they were awesome stats. I mean, it was just re-watching the film a couple times. Uh, they were loud. They, they really helped us win that game down the stretch. 14 ties, 8 lead switches in the game against Northern Kentucky. You had a great defensive stop as a team, and then the game winner by Nick Mayo in that last minute. So the defensive stop sums up who we are, and, and you know better than anybody. Nick gets a deflection. All three of our guys dive on the ball. Jamaro, Kelvin, and Nick, and they're all in the scramble out of bounds. Um, so we were playing so hard, proud of him. We had to put Nick back on McDonald, and Nick had four fouls, but we had to do it. And uh, we didn't want the game to go to overtime. We wanted to try to win it with the stop and then race it down. And we had timeouts, but we didn't really want to call one because, you know, you've been watching us play when they load up on Nick or even the South Carolina Upstate. We call that timeout. They put two guys on Nick, and we're trying to inbound him the ball. So we, did, we just wanted to race it up and get it to him and get him some space so he could get a shot. And he had a shot against really good McDonald pressure. Had to fade away a little bit. Yeah, uh, tough shot. But you know what? It was like Nick said. You know, he got some space. He got to his spot, got his feet set, and he made a play that Nick can make. So it's a good shot for Nick. 27 points, 11 rebounds for Nick Mayo for the second time this year, named OVC Player of the Week. You go back to that Upstate game. It was one where you had in control. So the euphoria of victory wasn't the same in that game because I know you didn't feel like your team played as well. A 14-point lead evaporates. And they had the ball, a chance to uh, tie or go ahead at the end before you made a good defensive stop. At the end of the game against South Carolina Upstate, you rewatch it and you can see it too. And I know you felt it in the in the Coliseum. Our body language got bad. You know, at timeouts we looked defeated. We were walking over to the bench instead of jogging like we do. And uh, but you know, luckily we were able to get a stop at the end. Kelvin does it does a really good job. He's a really good defender. We just got to keep getting him in better game shape. But uh, you know, at least we won. You know, we 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 got to learn in a win instead of learning a loss, which is huge for us. Eastern Kentucky will now go to Xavier on Saturday night in Cincinnati. A pair of six and four teams, but Xavier a top 50 team preseason. And you look at this coach, they've lost to uh, number 16 Wisconsin by nine, number eight Auburn by nine, and by to Cincinnati in the top 30 by 15. So they've played a tough schedule. So six and four doesn't really say how good they are under a first year coach. Yeah, no, they got a good team. They got a, a, a superstar on their team named Najee Marshall. He actually played for me at Hargrave, who's a really talented kid. He'll be an NBA guy. So it's going to be a huge challenge for us. Um, you know, we, the last couple of days we focused on exams. We haven't even really begun to talk to the guys about Xavier, but we'll start that today. And, uh, but I'm excited for the opportunity. The player you mentioned, he's one of six between nine and 13 points. So they're deep, they're balanced, and, and their head coach, uh, Travis Steele, was an assistant there for 10 years. Chris Mack took the job at, at UofL. So it's a program that just sustains itself year in, year out. Yeah, they were the number one overall seed last year in the NCAA tournament. Yeah. They, they got a good team. They got a great program. Uh, Travis is doing a good job. And it'll be a huge, a huge challenge for us. But we're, we're excited to play. What's the key that, that you want your team to focus on in this game? How do you keep this one close and uh, be in position to pull the upset? We got to play with a lot of confidence. You know, we got to keep building on everything that we've been doing. Um, and I think we will. We, we got some swag, Stotts. You know, guys believe, you know, our press is getting better. We're getting better in the half court. We got to continue to stick our box outs and drive back. And we did that at the end of the Northern game. We were, we were hitting our box outs. We were, it was great to watch. So, you know, we just got to keep building. How, how wet did you get in that postgame celebration? Uh, I had to change my clothes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you can't celebrate everyone like that, but a Northern game, last second shot. I mean, the kids deserve it and, and the coaching staff because of how, how hard you've worked to get here and trying to get this program back with, as you said, some swag. Yeah, we, we've come a long way in a short amount of time, and all, all the wins are huge for us. You know, we, we're, we're learning how to win these close games. Um, you know, we're doing some really good things and uh, really proud of them. Guys are having fun, though. And we got great chemistry. These guys love each other. You know, whether, like, I get in the locker room, 
The first two guys that are in the front, and you can see it in the video, are Oakley and Tay Weaver. Tay didn't even play, yeah. you know, and uh, Oak only played six minutes. It wasn't Oak's night. But those guys were as excited as any. But they were excited like they hit the game-winning shot. So these guys love each other. That we got great chemistry, and we got to keep building. Thanks, A.W. A.W. Hamilton, the Colonels against Xavier. An 8 o'clock tip-off on Saturday night in Cincinnati. We'll have the call at 100.7 FM. You can catch it on the TuneIn app as well and the stream at EKUSports.com. When we come back, we'll stay on the theme of basketball. Check in with Terry Goodlett, one of the players on the women's basketball team. Every day is a concept that few people can commit to. Every day requires a level of dedication that forces you to test your limits. Every day I'll give back to the community because I draw strength from their support. Every day the sounds of your cheers will echo through my mind. Knowing that you have my back means I can always look forward. Every day I'll be too tired to sweat and my bones will ache. Every day will provide me with the slight edge that I need to succeed. Champions are built every day. Is Pickle struggling to get up and down the stairs? No. Why? Does she cough a lot or often experience shortness of breath? Um, no. Does she hang out with the wrong crowd of dogs? Say what? I'm afraid Pickle's here is a smoker. When you smoke, your pet smokes. Quit Now Kentucky offers you the free help you need to quit tobacco. To learn more, text QUIT KY to 797979. At Eastern Kentucky University, we recognize greatness starts in the classroom, but it doesn't end there. You have to get hands-on, get real-world experience, and discover who you are meant to be. Be a rising star. Be a hero. Be a colonel. See what you can be. Visit go.eku.edu slash colonel. Welcome back to the show. We'll talk women's basketball now. And sophomore guard Terry Goodlett is with us, uh, sophomore out of Louisville Butler. You guys had a big game over Kentucky Christian, a win, and you were in double figures in assists. That had to feel good to get that win. Tell me about why you were playing so well and finding your teammates. Um, they were just there. Uh, we ran the plays. We executed the plays. And I was just finding them. They were in the right spots. <laughs> It's tough making that transition, and you were in a, in a very successful high school program, won two state championships, but making that transition to college, do you feel different now as a sophomore than you did as a freshman? Definitely, uh, especially coming off an injury my freshman year. Uh, this is my first full season, being able to practice in the preseason, uh, being here in the summer, doing all the workouts, and now I'm playing. I've started every game. I feel like being the point guard, I have to, you know, run, run it all, do it all. They, they listen to me, you know, out there. What about uh, the fact that you had so much success and your team did at Louisville Butler? How did that prepare you for college? And what does it feel like to say, hey, I won two state championships on a team? I don't really say it too much, but I don't even know if people know. But I don't know, it's like it kind of gives me a leg up here and knowing what it takes to be successful as a team. This is how good Terry's team was when you were in high school. You were 119 and 17. So it, we talk about, I hear coaches talk about, I want to recruit winners. So you were one of the winners in high school. Now, winning in college is a different story. How important was that Kentucky Christian win to get that win and try to start getting some momentum? Because as you look down the road, the OVC is on its way. Yes, sir. It gave us, uh, it did give us some momentum, uh, which I think we played, which is why I think we played well against George Mason, but we, you know, came up short. We fought the whole game. Um, we played West Virginia coming up. So hopefully that can give us some momentum coming into that game too. West Virginia was nationally ranked when, when uh, the Colonels lost to them down in the Bahamas. They were ranked 22nd. Falling out of the top 25, you play them in West Virginia, but not in their home arena, but in Charleston. Uh, what will you learn from game one against them to, to do better in game two? Um, we know we have to come out strong, finish strong, play every minute strong. Um, we have to play as a team. We have to be able to play defense, you know, get stops. 
we're smack dab in the middle of finals and, and you, you don't have an easy major business uh, counting final facing you and others. Uh, uh, that's another part of being a student athlete and, and the most important part. So why a business major? Um, well, I know that having a business major, you know, a degree in business, you can pretty much go anywhere with that. It's so, it's so versatile, but I do want to eventually like own art museums and have my own, but like not a regular art museum, you know? So something uh, a little what? Like what type little, of like, art museum? Abstract, like abstract. <laughs> a little up modern, you know, a little yeah. to, the, to the young people. So do you set, obviously you set goals. Do you set goals for, for both your basketball career and, and your, your future, you know, as a business person? Yes, sir. Why is that important to you? It's just something that I love to do or love to, you know, talk about along with music, which is it's going to be a part of my museums, too. Uh, so it's all going to be incorporated and it's all thought out. I just see it, you know. That's awesome. <laughs> well, good luck in the rest of the basketball season. Uh, sophomore Terry Goodluck with us here as uh, the EKU women's basketball team will be in Charleston on Saturday to take on West Virginia. That game will uh, tip at 4 o'clock and then the uh, Colonels will be back home on December 18th for a 7 o'clock game against Brescia before their Christmas break. When we come back, we've talked about success on the court. You talk about student athletes here at EKU, a lot of success in the classroom as well. Listen up, if you're a tobacco user, I've got one word for you, quit. Quit, and I'm not just talking about smoking either. I'm talking about vaping, I'm talking about chewing or whatever. Now nobody says quitting is gonna be easy, but I'm here to tell you, you can do it. You just have to believe in yourself. If you need help, talk to the folks over at Quit Now Kentucky. For help quitting, text QUIT KY to 797979. We are more than just athletes. We inspire scholars. We inspire leaders. We inspire champions. We inspire family. This is the Ohio Valley Conference. We've talked about the tremendous success on the court of basketball here on this show, but let's talk about the most important thing, success of the student athlete in the classroom. And it is growing at Eastern Kentucky University and something to be very proud about. Dr. Sheila Presley is the faculty athletics representative and it's just come out from the NCAA. They have a thing called the graduation success rate. They track students that enter a certain year of school and did they graduate and so tracking Back to 2011, our success rate at 86%, up from 82%, that's a tremendous thing to be proud of. How did it happen and why is it so important? It happened because number one, our student athletes are committed to what they do. And uh, we also have a tremendous group of faculty and staff here on campus who stand to support those student athletes. Why is it important? Because they're students first. And the goal is to graduate them with a degree that will help them become successful professionals. There is that myth about the, and I hate to use this word, but the dumb jock. You know, I've been around a lot of student athletes. I teach one class and it's anything farther from the truth. That is a bad stereotype. These kids work hard, they're committed, they're goal oriented. That's what I sense and, and they're on task. Absolutely. I have the great honor and pleasure of working with the Brodsky Center, which delivers a number of services to our student athletes to help them be successful in the classroom. And I can tell you that it doesn't matter what time of day I drop in, even on evenings and weekends, we see student athletes working very hard to achieve success in the classroom. And they're doing it with the assistance of tutors or maybe some other assistants from across campus, but they're doing it. And they're doing it on the bus when they're traveling, they're doing it on the plane or in the airport or wherever they need to. So 
I would say that the student athlete is probably working many hours into the night beyond what some students have to because they, they really have two jobs. I'll just give you an insight. Terry Goodlett was here with the women's basketball team. She had been up uh, late into the night studying for an accounting exam yes. that she had this week and, and mm -hmm. she had played a game on, on Sunday and you know they have practice and all that kind of thing. So that's what it is. Now, there, there is another thing I think is important to mention. Mm -hmm. Tutoring and help in the classroom. Mm -hmm. It's not just for the student athletes. We have the Bratsky Center that's for right. the athletes, but there are other tutors Tutor centers on campus for any yes. student at EKU. Absolutely. Across campus over in the library we have the Student Success Center and that center is open to any student on campus and uh, they stretch their hours as much as they can based on the staff who can volunteer there and for the other students who are also working there but it is really open to anyone who needs help. Also, if you look across the academic colleges within some departments, um, you will find that there are tutors behind the scenes to help in particular courses and majors. So the students who are enrolled here are already paying for those services. Whether they seek them out or not is really up to them or if there's something missing and they ask for it through their department chair or their faculty mentor or their dean, it's really up to them to, to make that ask. But we aim to deliver, and so if students are in need, we're, we're here to meet the challenge. What's it been like for you personally to be the faculty athletics representative? What have you gotten out of it outside of all the hard work you've had to put in? It's exciting to see a student come here from the very first time they may hit campus and then to actually see them graduate. Graduation is probably my favorite activity at the end of the, the semester or the year. And we're coming upon that uh, this Friday, in fact. So when you see that development that takes place, the growth and the individuals start to appear as professionals, that is exciting to me. And to know that we have given that young man or woman everything we had to, to give them that edge in society, that is the most exciting part for me. Yes, it's, it's been important for me as far to see those increases in the GPAs and to see that GSR rate um, increase, those are great, the numbers look good, to see all those different majors that come out of the programs. But the bottom line is those individuals. What have we done for that individual to make them more successful and to make them a contributing member of society? Thanks, Sheila. Have, have a great holiday and thanks for everything you've Thank done. Thank you, you do the same. All right, that is Dr. Sheila Presley a faculty athletics representative, and that does it for another edition of Inside EKU Sports. You can keep up with Colonel Athletics by following and liking our social media pages at Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Until the next time, as always, go Big E.